Okay, yes. Remember when I told you guys that I had an epic interview? I mean, literally. I mean, it was epic. Yeah. But I mean with the company, Epic Charter Schools, to be a virtual teacher. Remember, remember when I told you that? Yes. So, one of um, my subscribers, somebody had commented, well, they're going through some type of legal thing. Would that affect the hiring process? And I said, oh, surely it won't. Sure. No, that shouldn't affect anything. I got this in the bag. And this is one of those times when I want to say epic schmepic. So, <laughs> I haven't given up on epic because my youngest son, he is enrolled with epic charter schools. And, you know, he learns virtually. They do have a few physical locations, but he is like homeschooled so he just learns virtually at home so he's enrolled the state is saying the students are not being affected but you guys I smashed that interview I mean my interviewer I had three interviews it was a three-part interview I'm gonna tell you how the parts went okay uh, so the first part of the interview it was just you know standard you know how they so tell me about yourself tell me you know why do you choose epic why you know um what you know what do you have experience teaching so just your standard interview questions nothing fancy just kind of get to know you as a person kind of some summing up your resume summing up you know how you the things that the questions that you answer would you apply they're going to re-ask you some of these questions and i truly believe that they want to see how you are at speaking because of course you would have to speak with parents you would have to communicate with the students you would have to have communication skills you can't be awkward teaching virtually you know i mean you just have to just shake all that off so yeah they ask you these standard interview questions for interview one then once they kind of you know like dress like you're going to an interview don't wear a t-shirt don't come like this don't come looking like this dress like you are going to an interview dress nicely i had on a nice top you know they just saw me from you know like my chest up like what you guys are seeing right now but I'm completely indecent today because I'm coming at you indecently but dress like you are attending an interview dress for success you know it can be party upstairs I mean well business upstairs and party down below they're not gonna see that they're just gonna see this okay and then she was like you know we would like to go ahead and invite you for the second part of the interview so she told me right then and there that they want to go ahead and go forward and invite me to do the second part of the interview she explained what the second part of the interview was which oh, this was the part I was like oh. so I had the interview the very next day for the second part she was like she asked me when will you be available because it's like I want to say self-paced but the second part of the interview is not with an actual person it's all recording and they give you three hours so you tell them the time you give them the day you give them the time and they're like okay so you need to have three undisturbed hours and the way they do it like I said I think I said one o'clock I had the first part of the interview on a Monday okay and then I said okay I, I'll take it one o'clock tomorrow which would have been a Tuesday so I said okay one o'clock tomorrow so she explained okay you're going to get the directions for everything you need to do at one o'clock so they're not playing they send you everything you need at the time you said you want to go ahead and do the second part of the interview so at one o'clock I had got the email and the email told me okay now I'm not going to show you guys you know normally guys I will show you everything you know this is what it looked like this is what they said but I can't show you all of the email because you know you obviously they want to keep it kind of shh, shh, shh. 
because they don't send it to you until the very last minute. They give you zero time to prepare. But I'm going to tell you what it was about. I'm going to tell you what it entails, okay? So that second part of the interview, it was you actually had to do research on a student. They gave you like a case file, so to speak. So they would give you the name of a student. They would give you the student's data from their like their test scores over the past year and a half year and a half two years worth of test scores and based off of how that student did they'll even give you a category like they'll say math so I had a student it had their name and it had their test scores over the last two years had all the data you know with the little graphs on how they've been kind of you know going along where they've been hitting on the chart as far as proficiency in according to grade level um, state level different things on the graph right so you know they only hire certified teachers so as a certified teacher you should be able to read those graphs and know what you're looking at and understand all of that about testing and how to interpretate in, interpretate interpret <laughs> <laughs> interpret that information so this is for certified teachers only as position only for certified teachers so then you look at the graph and you have to look at okay look at that you know they're talking about math were they proficient were they you know are they high what well, what's going on there then you had to determine what state standards you were going to use to focus on with this student to help them get them where they need to be or you know help them improve at least help them improve what state standards do you think you need to create a lesson on to help this student and so I chose like four different three or four different state standards that I was like okay this is the main state standard and it was like and it had a lot in there I was like okay this we're gonna work on these different concepts of math because my person was actually um, under they were not proficient they were under where they needed to be and so I chose state standards based off of the data what areas in math they were weak in because they had some strong points they had some weak points so I chose the areas that they were weak in what state standards are we going to focus on and you have to create a lesson plan you have to create a lesson plan the, a whole lesson plan and they gave you like a template basically you would have to do the you know the I you know I like to do the anticipatory set the I do we do you do and then an assessment you have to write how are you going to assess the student to know you know how they have progressed after this lesson to know where they're at after you teach this lesson and the lesson was to be it was a lesson that was supposed to be no longer than two hours so you had to write a lesson plan based off of this student's data <laughs> it sounds like a lot you guys and they only give you three hours three hours so at one o'clock I started I had to be done and have everything submitted by 4 p.m. it had to be submit it back into you know the according to the directions the email it told me to send it to it had to be done by 4 p.m. so it sounds like a lot so I was just like oh oh I was sweating but I did that okay I did that and I have a video because after you did all of that after you created the lesson after you read the data after you um, did all of that uh, it took some research some googling like you know like finding everything that I need to find it took some research I pulled me, me a lesson together I got me some resources pulled that together put that in the lesson plan that is my specialty so be prepared it's a three hour second interview and you're gonna have to do you you need to be strong in lesson planning and then the very last step was you had to create a video pretending like you're talking to the parents telling them about the you know the educational plan the lesson plan and how you're going to help their child now I'm gonna show you my video I, I'll show you that part the video that I made as to me pretending like I'm talking to the parents I'm gonna show you that here better now okay wonderful yes yes so I'm LaShondra 
Miss Lala. I'm so pleased to meet you today and we're going to discuss your learner, our learner, Cora. So yes, Cora, seventh grade math. So I was looking through, I was looking through like her her growth in her math recently all the way back from last spring to to current and I saw that there was like this tremendous jump there was this jump there and that's something to be excited about you know we want to be excited about those jumps when we see them like yes there's something that you know we're getting it we're we're, we're seeing it we're seeing the growth and then there was like a slight decline and then it's kind of been kind of it plateaued so we're going to kind of jump start we're going to jump start that and get that going to get Cora on track so I'm just going to show you I don't know if you've seen this yet or not but um let me share my screen here so I'm gonna do a a screen share so you can kind of get an idea of what we're going to work on today so here we go these are the standards that we're going to work on. So I'm sure you're probably familiar with some of the things, the questions that your learner has had with you and things you've seen Cora struggling with. So we want to be able to use strategies and algorithms based on knowledge of place value and equality to add and subtract two digit numbers. But we're not gonna stop there because we also want to be able to add and subtract fluent fluently with multi-digit numbers as well because when you're talking about money and you know decimal points we want to make sure that we have that number sense down so we're really going to work on that and that's going to really pick her up that like build that foundation there we don't want her on a foundation of sand we want that solid foundation so we're going to really you know um get on that and make sure that it's a solid foundation there. So we're going to use addition and subtraction to solve real world mathematical problems. We're going to make sure that she, of uh, course, able to recognize the differences between a fraction, a mixed number, a decimal number. And so if she's able to recognize that, then, hey, that's a big step because that tells us, okay, there's a process there's steps that I need to take to solve this and we're gonna focus on our focus is going to be solving real world and mathematical problems requiring addition subtraction that's this one down here this one at the very bottom down here that's going to be our main focus so all of these standards will be addressed we're going to do a one-on-one -on -one meeting and we're gonna really make sure that what she has learned previously is sufficient enough to keep building on. And then we're gonna make some little adjustments and tweak it here and there. So looking at, I wanted you to see where she is also progressing and where she has plateaued. So here we go here. I have pulled up a sample for her of her, her um, scores. So we see here it's in the say 198 for numbers and operation 37th to 40 14th percentile so we want her to right now she's below below the mean means below the average and you can see the graph here that's where i say there's that spike and then it then it started to kind of go down a little bit then it plateaued a little bit so what we're going to do i have a lesson especially made for cora so i wrote out this lesson and our objective is to get her, you know, where she's able to accurately add and subtract those multi-digit numbers. And we're going to make sure that she's understanding. So the entire lesson is about an hour and a half in length. And it really does a lot of practice for her where we're going to have me do it. And she watched me do it. Then she's going to do it with me. Then I'm going to sit there and let her do it alone, but I'm going to be there for any questions or support she may have so we don't reach that level of frustration. So she will always have that support system there to get her where she needs to go. So with all that in place, you know, I jump back to the graph showing where she has been currently. Then instead of her getting in the red, hey, we're going to take baby steps. 
but I'm confident that let's see if I were to draw on this graph we can get her at least up in in this area we can get her up there and then we can work on you know getting her in the yellow and then hey once she has that comprehension laid out that foundation right there then as she builds upon it she's going to build up her confidence because you see that her other scores are higher in those other areas so let's go back to let me erase that for you here so look geometry and measurements so geometry she can see the shape she can measure the shape that concrete that right there that concrete visual right there she's stronger in those areas she's so she has strength in those areas so we can use that and make these numbers more concrete and help her build upon that so we're going to use her strengths to strengthen those weaknesses I don't even like to call them weaknesses the ones that just need a little more support we're going to use those Hercules over here to strengthen up these ones over here that are just like hey me too I want to come too and we're, we're gonna get her on track so do you have any questions for me regarding where she's at currently or how we're going to do the lesson we can schedule the lesson at your soonest availability I know I have some availability here coming up this next week so we can follow up with that wonderful wonderful well as always it was wonderful meeting you thank you for taking the time to come well to <laughs> to join me today and discuss our success plan to get Cora better than back on track okay so I know that together we will you know we're, we're gonna make this it's it's not going to be a sprint but it, it's going to be a journey it's, it's going to be forward momentum so together we can do it I know we can so yeah is that Cora all right yeah Cora I got your back I got your back high five all right we got this I'll see you guys in the next meeting and I'll send you some emails or anything that you may need to get set up okay thanks <laughs> goodbye okay so yeah I'm telling you I was professional and they loved it I smashed it I was invited to the third interview the third interview you talk to like a principal or um, uh, some type of I forgot this woman's title but I talked to someone not a, it wasn't a principal but it was someone that works as a I don't know I don't know what would you what would you I don't know what you would call it like a, a go-between person between principals and um, not a learning coach I don't think he, she would would have been a learning coach but I had a third interview and the third interview would have been the last interview so I had the third interview she asked me some questions and then she was so I mean when you get to the point where they're smiling like yeah and that you know that is great yeah you know I love that answer I'm telling you she even said you know you're the first one to give me that answer I love it I love your personality I love how I even asked you questions that weren't even on my question list I asked you two questions that weren't on the list and you nailed it you really you smashed them you smashed it right out the park so I would love to have you on my team I wish I can personally put you on my team but I have to be fair and I have to submit everything and hopefully and she even did the shoulder thing hopefully I will get to talk to you real soon and you know the eyebrow real soon she did all of that all of that and that's when I came on YouTube and I was like I got it I'm just waiting to hear back I'm so excited I <laughs> wouldn't you have thought you got it right mm. so then um yeah like right when I had that third interview that's when like everything hit the fan with the media like poop and fan meet and creates the poop dust explosion okay yeah so you guys if you guys have watched any of the media or know anything about it basically the 
the state of Oklahoma is saying that they misappropriated like two million, two million, ten million, some millions of dollars worth of learning funds, and they're like, mm -mm, you're gonna have to pay this back. Like this, no, this is a no go. So they got in trouble with some some funds that they're saying that they need to pay back because it wasn't spent correctly and it was some I can't remember if it was two or ten it was a T a T number it was either two or ten million dollars and as soon as that became public and they lost their um, they went to a hearing and they sent out a message to everybody I'm a parent so I got a message parents don't worry don't fret and yes we went to the hearing so yeah so then after all that was said and done 24 hours later I got an email saying I'm sorry we don't have enough students to bring on any more teachers but we are you know um, I'm going to show you that email too something about they, they said something about they didn't have enough students which I know they do because the lady at the third interview she did tell me she was like oh my goodness we have students that are on a waiting list waiting for teachers and you are coming in at the perfect time it's kind of like on the job training as soon as you get hired we're gonna you're you're probably gonna already have students on your roster she was speaking like I had this okay like and I'm sure she if she had her way she would be like all right start tomorrow you know but when they submitted that and with the the money issue yeah they did not <laughs> go any further <laughs> but that's okay that's okay so I was a little bummed I was just like <sighs> but I had got my heart set up on actually teaching for a school virtually so I applied at K-12 <laughs> I am applying at K-12 and K-12 is national I think epic is an Oklahoma thing but K-12 is national and I got invited to an interview I got invited to interview now, I'm a little nervous I'm sweating bullets because they invited me like almost 48 hours ago and I haven't even started it yet because I'm just like because <laughs> it's another one of those things where it's like okay they sent me an email saying okay you're gonna interview and you're gonna answer these questions and then you have to submit a video and in this video you have to I have to teach a 10 minute lesson and you guys know I'm good at this I'm, I'm good at this so I'm just as long as I've been in the game I still get nervous okay and I'm just I'm gonna do it today I'm gonna do it today and I'm going to show you guys what I do because I want to help you I want to help you and I'm I'm confident I'm confident that I'm gonna get it I'm just confident that I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna speak that I'm gonna speak that I spoke it out there with epic and if it wasn't for that little issue I know I would already be on the team I just know that I'm just gonna say that I I know I would but that's okay everything happens for a reason and obviously my reason was to boost up my confidence boost up my you know hey you can do this and there are other places out there so maybe it was because I would have probably never looked I only went to epic because somebody was like pushing me you should try it you should try it I was like you know I'm good what I'm doing now I'm good I have so many things going on I'm good I'm okay but I did it and then I was like mm, oh my gosh they really want me like they're interested in me so it kind of like you know it boosted up my confidence a little bit so the next update will be k-12 okay so hopefully now if you do if any of you guys are in Oklahoma or if epic branches out soon I mean they're trying to resolve this little issue but um, when they start hiring teachers again if any of you guys are in Oklahoma or in places where maybe epic could be branching out to in the future mm -hmm, then at least you know what the process is like or maybe companies like epic you would have an idea of what the virtual teacher position is like for like a an American charter school but an online position instead of working in the brick and mortar it gives you an idea of what it's like so you guys thank you for watching this and being so supportive of me cheering me on and you know listening to my updates this I mean 
you know, I, I update you guys and I give you guys information because I'm here for you. I'm here for you and I just put the business out there I just put it on out there so you guys know that LaShondra did not get the epic position I mean I could say it's because of this reason it's because of that reason bottom line I didn't get it but I am not discouraged at all I was disappointed but I'm not discouraged it's actually pumped me up and I'm like all right k12 I got you I got you I got you in the bag so look out for that update TTF <laughs> and